Good evening YouTube, um, I'm very sorry about my voice and if I burst into coughs or if the audio mutes, um, I have quite a bad chest infection. Um, but anyway, let's crack on. Um, this is my Armour 3 pre-game performance increase tutorial. Um, I don't seem to be able to find the, the hard information myself easily. Um, there's a few Google kind of walkthroughs on forums but nothing solid and uh, certainly nothing which I found amazingly helpful um, so a short culmination of information which I've gathered together um, effectively these are some changes that you do um, before starting the Armour 3 game to try and pick your FPS up that little bit and just make the game run a bit smoother um, not going to be promising any dramatic increases there's not going to be anything like 40, 50, 60 frames increases um, just some little tweaks here and there which are going to make the game hopefully you know if it's the difference between 25 and 30 frames um, to me that's unplayable to just about playable hopefully um, these all do the same thing for you um, so let's get started okay the first one um, is going to be actual launch options in Steam so open up Steam Go to your Armour 3 uh, game and right click and go into properties. In properties you've got quite a few tabs across the top. We'll go over another one of these shortly, um, but the main one is general. And then you want to click on set launch options. So in here you have uh, a number of parameters which you can set, uh, which will affect the way that the game handles. Apologies about the break there. Um, so yes, there's a number of parameters which you can set in here. Um, because it's pretty difficult to see them there, I have loaded them into Word so that you can see them a little bit better. So the first one I have, CPU count. This is literally the number of threads which you have in your system. Um, if you're looking at tinkering with armour in this way, you probably have a good idea of what your system's capable of. I have an i7, therefore I have 7 threads. My CPU count is 8. If you have an i5, chances are you're going to have a CPU count of 4. And if you have an AMD CPU, you're never going to get decent frames. That's a joke. If it's a quad core, it's 4. Hex core, like a 6300, it's 6. And if you're uh, one of the lucky few you get a semi decent chip like an 8320, 8350, or the new 95 series, you're going to have an 8 core CPU um, just like that. So you want to set that as that. And the next one down in my list. Um, hi, um, no this isn't a drug reference um, this sets the priority of the game to high so Windows will actively prioritise this game over other applications give it available resource if it needs it um, not that it probably should most modern games should handle this Max Mem is the next one uh, max memory is literally that. Armour shouldn't use much more than 4 gig. However, I set 8 gig in mine um, just as a, a safe bet to go to, really. If it needs to address more than 4 gig, it's there. My system has 32 gig, so I'm, I'm not really too fussed about using that. The next one, no pause. If you happen to tab out of the game, the game normally pauses. This parameter will stop that from happening. Um, not so much a, a massive game changer but ultimately if you tab out, tab back in, you're going to have a small catch up period where the, the system needs to re-render and, and catch up again no pause just stops that from happening the downside to that is if you're in like a single player you probably will get a shot if you're in the middle of a, a firefight because the game is still running in the background this one isn't so applicable but I use it, no splash, literally just no splash screen as you're loading the game makes the game load that little bit quicker and it's a little bit less jerky on that first menu no logs, it's quite an important one, it's a fairly recent one which I found um, it is literally uh, a stop for logging whilst in game if your game crashes, granted you're not going to know why but you don't need to know why really, it's buggered, just reinstall it no logs stops that um, and this was kind of the biggest performance gain I found. It gave me about 10 to 15 frames. So definitely worth doing. 
the last one, uh, the world equals empty, is again uh, it falls into a similar kind of league as No Splash. It just makes the game start a little bit quicker. Uh, the menu is a little less jerky, and you can just get to the bit that matters faster. Um, all of these combined, um, I did find, give me a nice little boost, and it does help out quite, quite a bit. I'd probably say my system probably should handle the game quite well. Um, but this is probably just dotting some I's and crossing some T's. So what you want to do is grab those all individually, add them into your Steam startup parameters one by one with a space between them, and they'll all take effect. It doesn't matter what order they go in, you can have CP count first, last, no logs first, last, it doesn't really matter as long as they're in there. Apologies. Okay, so the next point I'm going to go over um, whilst you are in the properties is the local files. The verify integrity of game cache. This checks the, the files on, on your system against what Steam think you should have. Um, if there are any errors or any broken files, it will pop up, it will tell you, it will correct them, and then hopefully if there are any errors with files, that should keep your game running smoothly because um, it's already corrected them. Again, it's a small one, but it does make a bit of a difference, so it's definitely worth doing. It won't cost you anything, and it's an easy one to do. The button's there, so it's not like you're going to break anything. So, on to the last one. Just close that off. This one is a little bit more... a um, little bit more tricky. If It's not so much a case of having buttons to easily click to go to. So we'll open up your start menu, um, run armor3.cfg, so that will bring your file up, right click this, open with, and you want notepad. This is more of an in-game kind of setting, uh, but uh, this is the fabled GPU max frames ahead um, fix. So. Follow down to GPU max frames ahead, change this value to 1, as I have done, and then GPU detected frames ahead also needs changing to 1. I believe standard, this one is about 1000 and this is about 3. Um, there seems more evidence of it working better with 1 on 1 than it does with 1000 and 3. Um, change those, file, save. Maybe worth making a backup of that first if you're not capable of deleting some zeros and changing uh, uh, an integer value. Um, but to be fair, it's fairly straightforward. You should be able to do that fairly easily. Okay, so um, that is the end of this tutorial. There are probably hundreds of tutorials which show you how to change your settings whilst you're actually in the game to get the best out of it. These are, like I say, an out-of-game settings change that you can make. So hopefully you found this informative um, to a degree, or maybe it's it's just clarified what you already thought you knew. Um, I'd appreciate lots of feedback on the video, preferably positive but negative if it's there. This is the first video of this kind that I've done, but hopefully I'm going to do a few more for some different programs. Um, obviously my background there is a DAISY background, I'm probably going to go over a few DAISY settings soon. Um, yeah, please feel free to uh, to rate it out and um, and yeah, thank you for watching. Goodbye.